There's a famous wise saying that's captured by Solomon in the book of Proverbs. And he just simply says, hopes deferred make the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And we've all experienced that. Things that we've hoped for, things that we waited for, and then things that came to pass, it really was a tree of life. It was a beautiful moment that we waited, and then that day came. But my question for this edition of the AxaCast is what happens if the tree is chopped down? What happens if a storm comes and uproots the whole system, the whole structure, the whole dream, business? What happens when our kids die? What happens when the hopes deferred become a tree of life and then we're left staring at a stump? What do we do then? As we say at the Axe Academy, grab your axe, let's sharpen that sucker, and let's keep swinging away. Hey, my name is Eric Samuel Tim. Thanks so much for stopping by on this edition of the Axe Academy's AxeCast. If you don't know what the Axe Academy is, well, it's pretty simple. It's a specialized life development and community learning platform for leaders like you who really actually want to make their life count. Learning is intentional, and when we learn, we grow. We have many ways that we do this at the Axe Academy, and you can check those out at theaxeacademy.com. Remember to use the code SWINGAWAY10 and get that trial month on me for free. It's 100 bucks a year or 10 bucks a month, and frankly, it over delivers beyond measure, and we think you're worth it, and your dreams and the future that's in front of you will require many things, but it will require the best version of you. That's what we want to help find and discover and unleash like an axe. We think at the Axe Academy, in fact, we know at the Axe Academy, frankly, we believe at the Axe Academy that we are part flesh and part spirit. Part of humanity is this duality that lives in all of us. There's our flesh, which is our bones, and then there's this spiritual component or the spirit man or woman that exists in the form of a spirit. And this requires food for both. Check out feedone.com and how you can be involved in feeding a child with real food in the developing world for an entire month for 10 bucks. What feedone.com does actually is quite amazing. They take a child who needs that food and they connect you with that child. And for $10, the cost of two Subway foot long sandwiches, you feed that child for a month. Check out feedone.com to find out where they work and for more information. The other part of us is that we don't just live on bread as in the physical reality. We live on bread as in the spiritual reality or what Jesus says, every word that comes out of God's mouth. The Bible is God's word. It's this bread of life, the Holy Scriptures, and there are people, believe it or not, that are waiting for this bread. Now, in India right now, the need is great. Go to shareword.org and you can find out how you can put a Bible in someone's hand who is waiting for it right now that does not have access to it for five bucks. Shareword.org and feed someone. So the question that I asked for this Axe Cast really falls underneath a couple of the different categories that we handle at the Axe Academy. You could really place this underneath character development even critical thinking. This one could live in career and calling. This really could center around just one of Christ's teachings. That verse in Proverbs is penned and Solomon in a fog of wisdom writes this inspired scripture that just simply is unevadable because it's so true. Hopes deferred make the heart sick but a longing fulfilled is the tree of life. I've experienced this in my own life. Things that I've hoped for that were deferred and then reality set in and they became reality. And it was a tree of life. It offered 
shade. It offered fruit. It offered something better than the deferred state. I also love what Solomon talks about in different parts of Proverbs. Really, specifically, two come to mind. Proverbs 4.23, to guard our heart. It's the wellspring of life. These calloused hearts we carry, they hurt people, but the soft hearts we have can heal people. I love how he talks about the actions and how our words come out and how we have to watch those moments. In Proverbs 18, 21, we get to really realize that the words that we speak, the power of life and death is in our tongue. People say words to us. And sometimes it's hard to forget those words. But I love what my pastor Dale says. You can always forgive those words. You could read through Proverbs time and time again, and you'd have this wisdom like a Louisville slugger hitting you square in the face. It's rich. It's wise. And this story about a hope deferred in Proverbs 13, 21 resonates so deeply with us. Now, there's a couple other verses that resonated with my dad, by the way, in Proverbs. Proverbs 23, 13, and 14, to be specific. Something about sparing a rod from the child. In other words, spank your kids. Well, at least that's how he interpreted it. I'm not going to like debate spanking or not spanking and talking about what is okay for discipline as a parent and child relationship in this episode of the X Academy. I will say I am today because of my father's love, but also because of the father's discipline that he gave me. But I remember doing something so horrible that I was going to get in major trouble. And my dad sent me to my room and I knew it would be true that I was going to be getting this spanking. And so I went into my room and I put on every pair of underwear that I could. 14, 16, 18 pairs of Hanes tidy whities And I awaited, I awaited my father's entry on my waterbed. I had a waterbed. I don't want to talk about it. Let's move on. Keep going. But the point is this. My dad came in. He just simply asked me to assume the Proverbs 23, 13 position to which the belt came off much like a mower and its pull starter. And then he said those famous words that maybe you heard, son, I do this because I love you. Well, there's other ways to show it, dad. I mean, like ice cream for one, maybe. Uh, Maybe you've heard this one. This hurts me more than it hurts you. No, it doesn't. There's no way. There's no way this hurts me. Anyway, back to the story. He gives me what he thinks is going to be the crack of a belt on my blue jeans. And that's all he hears is the sound of leather hitting a pillow. He hits it again. And then he realizes what happens. And he kind of pulls the base of my pants out from the back of the lower part of my back and he starts to count my underwear like an old school Rolodex or sheets of paper and he finally gets to the space where he cannot count past the teens because he's dying with laughter. Like my dad is laughing so hard that he can't finish the proverb. It was amazing. I remember a moment when I was a kid and I wanted Air Jordans so bad because everybody else had Air Jordans. Now, it's not too uncommon to see people with Air Jordans, but when I grew up Air Jordans, there was like really just a couple different pairs and like two different colors, and they were $250, and my feet were growing so fast. By the time I went into the shoe store, by the time I left the shoe store, I'd need new shoes. So it always was a no It always was a hope that was deferred. I couldn't wait to get a pair of Jordans. I remember this Christmas came. Mom gave me these gifts. Dad gave me these gifts. My sister gave me these gifts. And they created to be sort of an ensemble of all of these different, I guess, let's say, 
attire from what would be a matching Michael Jordan outfit. I kind of looked like, you know, a YMCA village person because of the headband, but I thought I was cool. Mom pulled the surprise package out from behind the couch. I opened this couch. No, I opened the package and I saw the Jordans. These Air Jordans were in front of me. Now, they were these like sort of white and cranberry leather. They were the Jordan 6s, if you're wondering, all the sneakerheads out there. And this was a moment where that hope that was deferred, it was now fulfilled. And it was a tree of life. And so it really isn't the question that I want to handle when our hopes are deferred and they become a tree of life. Really what I want to ask in this episode is what do we do when that tree gets chopped down? What do we do when we're left, like I said, staring at the stump? So let's talk or let's create a roadmap a little bit about this journey. So on a piece of paper in front of you, I want you to write the letter A on the left hand side of the paper. I'm doing it too, so I don't screw this up. Just write A on the left side of the paper in portrait or landscape, doesn't really matter. On the other side, near the right margin, write the letter C. Now in the middle somewhere, write B, and then put lines in between A and B and B and C. So from left to right on the sheet of paper that's in front of you, it should be A-B-C. Let's start with A. A is hope. A is the thing that you're hoping for. It's the one thing that you're longing for. It could be a child. It could be a pair of Jordans. It could be a new job. It could be to graduate high school. It's a hope that you have. Now that dash in between A and B is the deferred state of that hope. It's what I refer to as God's waiting room. It's the space between A and B. It becomes the deferred state of that hope. B is when that hope is fulfilled. It's the place where that hope that was deferred now becomes fulfilled. And that is a tree of life. That dash is really God's refining room. It's the destroyed state. There's a deferred state and then there's the destroyed state. That dash on the other side of B is really when we're left staring at the stump that used to be the tree. And then C is the new normal or when we can hope again. So have you ever had a longing that was marked done? I'm wondering, have have you ever gotten to the spot where you've had a tree of life, a a baby, um, getting married, uh, a healing, a dream, you know, to be debt free, a goal, a job? Uh, practical hopes, um, you know, no debt, like I said, or, or a new home or maybe even peace or, or you know, for, for a minivan. And by the way, a lot of people grew up with athletes on their walls. I did. I had the famous Michael Jordan wings poster when he was palming a basketball and his outstretched like he was going to take off. I had a Bo Jackson poster that was uh, black and blue uh, when he played for the Royals and the Raiders. I mean, I had like this Reggie White poster, which which he was this amazing end for the Green Bay Packers. And he was also a pastor and he was the minister of defense. But I also had a bunch of cars in my room, pictures of dream cars, like some boys and, and, and some girls. I know they, they've had, you know, different posters in, in their room uh, of bands, but I had cars. OK, and, and I had I had one poster I really loved. It, it was it was a Chrysler Town and Country. It was a burgundy one. Sweetness. I had another poster. Uh It was Honda Odyssey. Yes. White. No. Pearl white with tan leather. I had a Ford Aerostar two-tone Eddie Bauer edition with the trip computer. Oh, yeah. That that was mint. And then, like, the best one was a poster. My dream, my, my hope that I had. You know it. Toyota Sienna. All-wheel drive. White. 
You're listening to a guy who has his dream car, by the way. Now, I say those things because I'm really asking that question if you ever had a earthly hope. Now, can I just pause just real quick to remind us all that the earthly hopes that we have all are in the shadow of heavenly hopes. And not to bore you with the details, but any earthly hope you'll ever have is in the shadow of a of a heavenly hope that I have. The hope of salvation. 1 Thessalonians 5.8 The hope that Jesus is coming back in Hebrews 9.28, the second coming of Christ. The hope of eternal life, John 5.24. The hope of the, an eternal body, 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 2. All of our earthly hopes really pale in comparison to those heavenly hopes. But when you look at those practical hopes, have you ever had one that was fulfilled? Every one of my kids has been this for me, a longing fulfilled that becomes a tree of life. In the book of Joshua chapter 3, they cross the Jordan. They're thankful. They build this monument. For 40 years, they had been wandering this land. This longing fulfilled becomes a source of joy, life, provision, fruit, thankfulness. And I guess I'll just simply say, if you've ever had that B moment in your life, enjoy that marker. Enjoy that state. Enjoy that place. But what about the line between A and B, the deferred state, or what I maybe sometimes refer to, not always, but case by case as God's waiting room. Have you ever had a hope marked deferred where you wanted to be married or you were looking for kids or you were waiting for healing or the dream was yet to become or you had this goal, this job? The children of Israel in Numbers 13 certainly did. You can read the story for yourself, but they live actually in Egypt, and they leave Egypt miraculously, and they're camped for about a year and a half, some scholars say. They get the law, they get the Ten Commandments, this Mount Sinai, this whole amazing things along the way. They send spies into this land, and they come back, and they grumble, and they mumble, and they begin to murmur about how how about how like they're not going to be able to do this. They can't overcome this. They're even grumbling in that state of why are we out here and why are we not back there? The word mumble or grumble, the same things that they did is an onomatopoeia. It's words that phonetically it imitates. It's like when you shoot a basketball and it hits nothing but net, it's a swish. When someone's at your front door and they buzz the doorbell or ding dong or the clang of cymbals or the buzz of a bee or the meow of a cat or the moo of a cow, the roar of a lion or even a dog that goes bow wow, which isn't true according to Brian Reagan. It's an onomatopoeia. It's the words that phonetically make that sound. And in that tendency, we tend to make these phonetic insights in the waiting room between A and B we become pessimistic, negative, critical, really impatient. We begin to murmur in three areas specifically. Negative murmuring in the inner self-talk where we become the problem. We're really a one-man pity party. We're in this deferred state and we negatively start to murmur inside that inner self-talk. Then it becomes outward talk where we're blaming others for this dream or this hope that's deferred. We're simply saying it's someone else's fault. It's there to blame. And it's like all the outward talk becomes negative. And then I think I've noticed it in my own life and in others in the waiting room in this deferred state between A and B. We can murmur upwardly, inwardly, outwardly, and upwardly where we start then to blame God. We say it's his fault. He's the one that's causing this. Whatever the case may be, we begin to murmur time and time again in that deferred state. And this deferred state 
can be a source of really sick hearts. Hurt, pain, frustration, this negative murmuring inwardly, outwardly, and upwardly. The only thing I can say in this place is a thankful heart really can turn any mumble, any murmuring to praise. I've had to offer that sacrifice of praise continually in those states in my life, and it costs me something. Hebrews 13, 5. I love what that says. Of the cost of my praise in that deferred state. Everything I have to give thanks in every state. In 518 of the first book of Thessalonians, it challenges me in every circumstance to give thanks. And in Ephesians 5, giving thanks for everything, for all things to God. I think about Paul in prison. If you don't know this story, there's a story where Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, is in this dank, dark, medieval, rat-infested prison. It's not like the ones that maybe you picture, you know, in the show Prison Break or maybe even Shawshank Redemption where they go out into the yard and they have reading and books and library and read. It's this, it's this dank medieval prison. Paul begins to praise in that place, and that praise becomes a passport in that deferred state that moves him from that prison. It's almost like the praise in that moment gave way to the hope that was deferred, even in that deferred state. There's a Swedish proverb I love. It just simply says, don't let sorrow come higher than your knees. In that deferred state, in that place where you're living in between the A and the B, be wary or be apparent or be armed with the fact that you will murmur. You will take that phonetic onomatopoeia innerly, outwardly, and upwardly. And how you can grow in that place is with a thankful heart and choosing to give thanks in all those states. And that praise becomes a passport out of that prison that is that deferred state. But what about the line between B and C? I mean, we've talked a little bit about A and that line between A and B, and then that line between B and C. That, my friends, is just simply God's refining room. Now, case by case, it might not always be that case, but the truth is, is in that place, God can work all of those things for good. So, Even though he may not cause, he did allow. And in that place, God makes the good. Not everything happens for a reason, but he can make reasons for anything. When you're left staring at the stump of the tree that was there, that's when we lived in this destroyed state on the other side of B. What happened to the children of Israel? I mean, after this amazing hope that was deferred, The children of Israel in Joshua 7 have this amazing conquest at Jericho. It goes smooth, fast. It's an absolute miracle. What happens? And then they're absolutely defeated at Ai, where they even say their hearts melted like water. Have you ever had a longing that was fulfilled, now Mark destroyed? Those Jordans that I wore I actually wore them on a mission trip to Africa. I remember after we were loading up the bus, running kind of the way the crow would fly through a field. Instead of the beaten path home, I just took a shortcut at dusk as it was getting dark and I needed to get back as soon as I could. In a full sprint across the beautiful red clay of Kenya, Africa, I ended up waist deep in human excrement in a latrine. Needless to say, those Jordans were tied together and thrown in the trash. Have you ever had a longing fulfilled that was marked destroyed? I got a friend in the wake of a tragedy who wrote me a letter. He writes, I appreciate you touching base. It's been a dark season for us. 
I thought I understood grief and tragedy. I've walked a lot of people through it for years. I buried babies and old women, but nothing has prepared me for this. It's brought such sadness into our lives. God is good and we'll get through it one day at a time, but our hearts will never be quite the same, or at least it seems right now. All I know moment to moment is that my son is not coming home today. He's not pulling in the driveway, strutting in the back door, asking to stay the night with a friend, or even hustling me for gas money. I know we're not watching postseason together. I know that his room isn't empty except the memories of his existence. I know that my heart aches every minute of every day. Do I know he's okay? I, I, I think so. Do I know he's happy? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Do I think he would want to come back to this earth? Probably not. But this in the better place still appropriately seems at my side in my vehicle on the way to another tournament or in his bed asleep or in class the last year of his high school. That seems like the better place to me. Maybe someday I'll buy into the the he's-in-the-better-place platitude, but for now, I'm stuck. I feel kind of bad that this whole emotional mess has swept me up on this loss. I'm not giving my best to my wife and to the other kids. It's like everything, including me, lives in the shadow of this tragedy. It's just so wrong. It's a thief and a bully. And if it's not roughing you up, it's taking your time, your emotion, your sleep, and your loyalty. And I want to sneak up on it and punch it in the damn head so hard to destroy it. But it is too savvy for that. It does the sneaking and it does the punching. Have you ever had a longing fulfilled that was now marked destroyed? This is a source of sick hearts pain and frustration again. In that place, in that space, it's almost like we become deferred again. If a longing fulfilled is the tree of life and that tree is taken, it's almost like we go back to that deferred state again. And in that deferred state, Solomon says it best, makes our hearts sick. So what do we do when we're left staring at the stump? Well, for those of you that are part of the Axe Academy or supporters, I'll go into this a little bit in detail in our extended Axe episode. But for the rest of us, let me just briefly state just a couple things that I've learned along the way of helping you get past that dash to see. In the wake of a tragedy, the fog of the mind, I'll just simply say that time will lift it, but your mind will can create it. You have to be wary of this and be aware of this. Mind, the battle of it, creates that fog. Now, there's a difference between getting through and out of this stage. To find C, to find hope again, you have to move through it. And I would encourage you all that grief is never the roadblock to the new normal. It's the roadway to it. I'll offer this thought from my perspective. Our inability to embrace the new reality really becomes a deferred state. And it's almost like we want what was and we don't want what is. And we're stuck in that place. And we never come to terms with the new normal. And reality becomes something that is deferred and in that place our heart is sick and so the reality is if you're left staring at that stump i'll say we all deal with new realities along the way so the reality is if you're left staring at that stump i will say we all deal with new realities along the way it's the new normal that humans have a hard time embracing the disappointment from what was what is the old and the new really they be they both become deferred so if you're in that state or you ever find yourself in that state be aware of that dash or the second dash and know this you will need help you're not equipped and you're not able to get to see on your own you're going to need 
make sure that you reach out to us at the Axe Academy or reach out to a loving, caring adult or a mentor or a pastor or a parent. When you have that hope that was deferred, that becomes fulfilled and then becomes deferred again, you need people to give you perspective and help along the way so you can journey back or actually through to the new normal where you can hope again. This, this is the wisdom that you need for your character development, for your dashed thoughts on career or calling, for the critical thinking so you can journey to see. My name is Eric Samuelson. Make sure you check out thexacademy.com. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, keep sharpening that axe, keep swinging away.